Now, if we think about the liver, it's in two lobes. So there's the right and left lobe in the liver. But within the lobes, there are lobules like this. And typically they're described as hexagonal six-sided lobules. And of course, they're actually microscopic. They're only about a millimetre or two in diameter. Maybe about two millimetres long. And the liver's got maybe a hundred thousand of these lobules. Roughly six-sided structures. Actually, the, the, the early work on these was done in uh, adult pigs, which have got quite well-defined hexagonal <laughs> um, lobules, but uh, humans are less distinct. So let's get it right. Lobes, there's four large lobes in the liver. There we've drawn the right and the left, but there's two smaller ones behind. So they're the lobes, but these are the lobules. And there's about 100,000 lobules in a liver. And in the lobule, there's the central lobular vein. Now at the corner, there's different vessels, structures. So there's bile channels, which we'll do in green. There's channels from the hepatic artery, which we'll do in red. Channels from the hepatic vein, which we'll do in blue, because it carries relatively deoxygenated blood. And initially this was called the triad, but um, we now know that there's lymphatic vessels as well, which we'll draw in yellow. Now, what we have in the liver are capillaries. So the capillaries go from here down to the central vein, like that. And the capillaries have um, it's an endothelium like this, vascular endothelium lining it. But there's very big gaps in the, uh, in the cells. We, could, we say that it's fenestrated. So if that's the internal lining of the capillary, we see there's lots of large gaps, fenestrations in the capillaries. So this capillary wall would be fenestrated like this. Then there's going to be another capillary from from there, another one from there, another one from there, another one from there, another one from there. So these are the hepatic capillaries or sinusoids. So the hepatic capillaries are called sinusoids. That is a hepatic capillary, a sinusoid. So the blood is going to go from the, it's going to be a channel there, from the hepatic artery into the uh, sinusoid. And it'll be the same from the channels there and from there. Blood is going to be flowing into these sinusoids from the hepatic artery. 30% of the blood supply from the hepatic artery. Also, there's going to be blood from the uh, hepatic portal vein, 70% of the blood. And that blood is going to mix in the sinusoids. Now, I've drawn the blood from the hepatic portal vein as um, dark, as blue. It's actually relatively oxygenated, but it's still about 75% saturated. Whereas the blood from the hepatic artery, of course, will be 98, 99% saturated, probably. But here's the blood in the capillaries, flowing towards the central vein, which will drain into larger veins and drain it away. So we have the sinusoids. Now, what we also have in the liver, of course, are the hepatocytes. So these are the individual hepatocytes. And the individual hepatocytes are in double rows with a very small gap between them. In fact, you can't really see the gap between them from on top. It's more of a tunnel inside them, really. 
same here rows of hepatocytes the hepatocytes are the uh, the functional unit of the liver the hepatocytes now these are individual cells of course each with their own nucleus and able to carry out pretty well all of the physiological functions associated with the liver now the capillaries let's just draw some um, capillary cells in here because these capillaries cells are what we call fenestrated as we've said so in essence they've got big gaps so there's some individual capillary cells and you can see there's large gaps between the individual capillary cells large gaps and it's the same for all the sinusoids the walls of the sinusoids are made up of these capillary cells but with large gaps between them now the large gaps mean that a lot of tissue fluid can form so tissue fluid will form from the capillary going into the space around the sinusoid and the space around the sinusoid is called the perisinusoidal space and we can see it's quite a large space so there's a large perisinusoidal space this is actually called the space of dis in old-fashioned books so I think you can see that tissue fluid is going to form coming out here into the perisinusoidal space of dis and that's good because it means that the individual liver cells can take up products from the blood for processing and excrete products once they've been processed and if we actually look at one of these individual liver cells we see that they're actually uh, the surface of them as microvilli like this to increase the surface area so that would be the blood side which is it's actually the tissue fluid Not there so allowing materials large surface area for materials to come in for processing and materials to go out so for example under the influence of insulin glucose will go in and be converted to glycogen under the influence of glucagon glycogen will be converted to glucose and released from the cell or alcohol might be taken in broken down by dehydrate dehydrogenasing enzymes in the liver cell and then excreted as metabolites it's these metabolites that give you the hangover actually when they get into the they get into the blood now when tissue fluid is formed as you know most tissue fluid will circulate along this way and most tissue fluid will be reabsorbed so the tissue fluid will circulate down there and then the majority of the tissue fluid will be reabsorbed into the capillary it's the same here tissue fluid will be formed from here and reabsorbed most will be reabsorbed but not all is reabsorbed that which is not reabsorbed must come out and it comes out in a bile channel and that forms a larger not a bile channel sorry a lymphatic channel thinking about the next bit comes out in a lymphatic channel and that drains the lymphatics away so blood is going into the blood is going into the capillaries here going into these capillaries tissue fluid is forming this tissue fluid is going over the surface of the hepatocytes here there would be a, an extra layer of hepatocytes I haven't drawn in double layer of hepatocytes various slices of my diagram aren't exactly to scale but that will be the hepatocytes there you can see it more clearly on this we've got the hepatocytes or again on this one we have the 
vascular endothelial cells here lining the capillaries that is the sinusoids and the tissue fluid forming into this space so it comes into close contact with the hepatocytes as we show on this blown up diagram. The tissue fluid which is not reabsorbed is drained in the lymphatics and the liver is producing maybe about two litres of lymphatic fluid a day. So blood is going in from the hepatic artery, blood is going in from the hepatic portal vein and lymphatic fluid is coming out and being drained by the lymphatics. Now as well as that we know that the liver produces bile and liver cells are two-faced. They have a tissue fluid facing side or blood facing side but all the bile they produce comes out the back way like this. So that means the bile is going to go into this gap between the hepatic plates. The bile will go into those gaps between the hepatic plates. And one of these bile channels is called a, a caniculus. A caniculus or a can caniculi would be plural. So the bile is going into the caniculi. And it would be the same here, we'd have two rows of liver cells, two rows of hepatocytes. Like this. I've drawn an enlarged caniculi this time. As we know, the perisinusoidal space of dis will be round about there. And the caniculi would be here. So it's this 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 is the bile side of the liver cells, excreting bile. And of course that has to go into a uh, one of the bile channels. One of the classic triad. So this diagram's now become a little confused, but I think you can see we've got blood from the hepatic artery, blood from the hepatic portal vein going in. That's centripetal flow going in. And also the formation and reabsorption of most of the tissue fluid is in this direction as well, in the centripetal direction. Flowing out, we've got the bile which is being formed, which is flowing out. That's the centrifugal direction. And we've also got the lymphatic fluid which is going out in the centrifugal direction. But all of this is to optimise the condition for the individual hepatocytes to let them perform their vital physiological functions. So that's the classic liver lobule, as we said, 100,000 or so per liver. Facilitating optimum conditions for the individual hepatocytes. Taking oxygen and nutrients to them. Removing bile and excessive lymphatic fluid. Also in the sinusoids, of course, we have the, uh, the macrophages, the Kumpfner cells, the liver macrophages, breaking down any bacteria that come from the, the gut via the hepatic portal vein. So lots going on in this fascinating, intricate hepatic histology.